Well, the National Rifle Association is facing pressure to reveal more details about its role helping President Trump win the 2016 election. Last week, a Russian gun rights activist, Maria Butina, who had direct ties with the NRA, was charged by the Justice Department with acting as an unregistered agent of the Russian government. She was arrested in Washington, D.C., as she was preparing to return to Russia. Butina is accused of trying to infiltrate the NRA and other right-wing groups. She worked for the Russian banker Alexander Torshin, a longtime friend of the NRA, who now serves as a deputy head of the Russian Central Bank. Uh, in January, McClatchy reported the FBI was investigating whether Torshin illegally funneled money to the NRA to help Trump. The NRA spent more than $30 million backing uh, 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 Trump as a candidate, more than twice what it spent on Mitt Romney's run in 2012. Maria Butina and Alexander Torshin attended a number of NRA events and other right-wing gatherings in recent years. In 2015, Maria Butina attended the Freedom Fest conference in Las Vegas, where she had a chance to question then-candidate Donald Trump. My question will be about foreign politics. Okay. If you would be elected as a president, what will be your foreign policy, politics, especially in the relationships with my country? And do you want to continue the politics of sanctions that are damaging of both economy, or you have any other ideas? I believe I would get along very nicely with Putin, okay? And I mean, where we have the strength. I don't think you'd need the sanctions. I think that we would get along very, very well. Less than a year later, in March 2016, Maria Butina and Alexander Torshin briefly met with Donald Trump Jr. at a fundraising dinner in Louisville. Two months later, an NRA member named Paul Erickson, who at the time was in a relationship with Butina, wrote an email titled, uh, quote, Kremlin Connection, to a Trump advisor. In the email, Erickson wrote, Russia was qu uh, quietly but actively seeking a dialogue with the U.S. Erickson is a longtime Republican operative who advised the presidential campaigns of Pat Buchanan and Mitt Romney. He also served on the board of the American Conservative Union. In recent years, Maria Butina was also photographed with many top Republican officials, including Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, former presidential candidate Rick Santorum, and NRA President Wayne La Lapierre. To talk more about the arrest of Maria Butina, we're joined by Greg Gordon, Washington correspondent for McClatchy, has written a number of exposés about the NRA's ties to Russia. Greg Gordon, welcome back to Democracy Now! Uh, talk about who Maria Butin is, Butina is, um, how she fits into the NRA, and this bigger story of the NRA in Russia. Good morning, Amy and Juan. And Juan, I share your sadness about the daily news. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is one uh, fascinating and concerning shoot of the uh, investigations that are underway right now into Russia's influence uh, in the 2016 election. Uh, and uh, the question, one question that is um, uh, unanswered still is whether uh, Russia somehow funneled money to the NRA to, to beef up its support for Trump. The NRA spent just a little over $10 million on Mitt Romney. Uh, in 2012, and now we're over $30 million, and probably more, because uh, they don't have to publicly report the uh, money they spend on getting out the vote and that, that sort of thing. So, Putina um, came to the United States uh, uh, in August of 2016 um, um, to ostensibly to become a graduate student at American University. Uh, but at the same time, she has forged all these relationships, and she also, uh, at the behest of Alexander Torshin, uh, headed a Russian gun rights group called the Right to Bear Arms, which was, seems a uh, there seems to be a disconnect here on this with, with regard to this group because Vladimir Putin doesn't want his citizenry to be owning guns, except maybe a hunting rifle. In any event, there, this led to the formation of this group. Uh, and Torshin's uh, forays to, uh, to meet with NRA officials led to a bond between these two groups. There were uh, cross visits. Uh, uh, NRA uh, board members and, le and former leaders went over to, uh, and in fact, an NRA president, Pete Brownell, went over to Russia 
uh, and uh, were hosted and treated to lavish meals by the, this, this uh, uh, group of, NR, of uh, Russian officials. And they also met with some uh, high-ranking Russian officials during their visits. And there's a, there are a lot of things going on here, because some of the Russian gun companies were trying to get into the U.S. market. Uh, Kalashnikov, the famed uh, manufacturer, uh, was, was under U.S. sanctions. Um, and um, so this, this relationship continued heading into the campaign. And in 2016, according to the FBI, which was tracking uh, Butina very closely, uh, she was very active in trying to set up meetings and back-channel communications uh, through the NRA uh, to, uh, between U.S. officials and uh, Russian officials. Uh, the, in, the indictment of Butina is, appears to be uh, just uh, the, the first strike by, by the FBI, uh, given that the, the charging documents state clearly that um, Torshin himself is also incriminated and describe him as a co-conspirator. So here you have, uh, and Torshin is, an, is a close ally, of course, of Vladimir Putin, as so many of these figures, oligarchs and the Russian officials at the upper echelons of their government, um, are. And, and they've all popped up in different places in this massive investigation of Russian influence, which is when you, every time some new piece comes out, you have to take a step back and say, well, wow, they're doing this, too? They were, they were uh, hacking the Democratic, top Democratic officials. They were blitzing uh, uh, social media uh, space with, with uh, messages that were either pro-Trump harshly critical of Hillary Clinton, or uh, we're trying to sow discord uh, with, with uh, messages about immigration, uh, but a lot of messages about gun rights. So the Russians clearly saw the uh, NRA and the gun rights movement, which backed Trump so strongly, uh, as, as an important uh, channel to, uh, uh, according to the FBI, to to make a connection, uh, they were there were uh, forays uh, by um, Alexander Torshin also to try to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting during the campaign between Trump and and Putin. And uh, Torshin himself thought that he was going to have a meeting. He tried to have a meeting with Trump, and he was blocked at the last minute. Uh, there's also a, a blend here with uh, the religious groups, the religious right in America, because uh, the uh, uh, Torshin and, and Maria Butina and, uh, arranged for a delegation of Russians to attend the national prayer breakfast. And what's, one of the things that's interesting that hasn't really drawn much attention is that, that um, the, this carried well into uh, 20. Uh, 17 and even into 2018, and they just arrested Maria Butina last week uh, as she was preparing, uh, in the FBI's view, to leave the country. Well, uh, Greg, I wanted to ask you, in terms of the—you mentioned that the $30 million that the, or, uh, the NRA spent on uh, in support of Trump, a lot of that was about $23 million was supposedly by its lobbying arm, which uh, the lobbying arm does not have to disclose its donors publicly. So what do you think are the chances now that uh, Mueller and his investigators have begun to, uh, or have already subpoenaed, the, in the information on who were the donors? To the, uh, to the NRA. Yes. And my partner, Peter Stone, and I reported last month that uh, uh, legal experts say it's highly likely that the FBI, the IRS, uh, and, and uh, prosecutors have seen the secret reports that, that up until about a week ago, were required to disclose these dark money donors. Uh, and and um, we're talking about $23 million of the $30 million that was spent by the lobbying arm. Now, let's be clear here. The Russians are not stupid enough to, to pump a bunch of money directly to the, uh, you know, in the name of, of the Russian government or an oligarch or, or so forth, to pump money into the NRA uh, that way, that just that just wouldn't happen. Uh, everything we've seen is that they're always they're always uh, uh, you know seeking plausible deniability for everything that happens. And of course, 
uh, the, one of the key questions here is if money, if money from the Russians went into the NRA's coffers, did the NRA know about it? Because it could have come in through a, li a limited liability corporation, uh, and these corporations do not have to disclose their, their beneficial owners, the people behind them. So uh, one of the questions uh, Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon was uh, had a, had a direct exchange with the NRA's general counsel over several weeks this winter, uh, and he was pressing to find out about this. You know, could could the NRA have gotten money from the Russians uh, uh, for another purpose and then use that money to offset? Uh, uh, offset the, the money that already was uh, devoted to those purposes and channel that into the, the election. Um, the NRA has said in 2016 it got a grand total of $2,500 from Russian donors. Uh, some of these were membership dues and so forth from from Alexander Torshin and, and others. And, and these uh, uh, monies, they said, were not used in the election. So, uh, this is a this is a. Uh, a but you hunt, also wrote a piece, sure. Greg, a lawyer who worked for NRA, said to have had concerns about groups Russia ties. Yes, uh, uh, Cleta Mitchell, who was a former NRA attorney, was described by sources as, as expressing concerns about uh, uh, how the NRA was handling its money in 2016, um, and we we contacted her, and uh, she was very upset. And, and denied it adamantly. Um, however, we went back to our sources again and again, and they stuck to their to that account. So uh, we'll have to see how that piece plays out. Now, bear in mind that th we were basically asking Cleta Mitchell to talk about, uh, or whether she talked about a former client uh, and in, in any way compromised the attorney-client privilege that would have been in play. So Maria Butina. Uh, I, I'm sorry. So Cleta Mitchell is is was in a bad spot, and we were and and, and but but it's interesting that this could have happened, and, and I must say that since our original story in January, we've confirmed, confirmed more more about the original uh, allegations, and of course this goes the, the release of this indictment, return of this indictment, also tends to confirm what we reported, but we'll have to see whether any money really was exchanged or, and Greg, or funneled uh, in. Who is uh, Konstantin Nikolev, the uh, uh, the Nik oligarch, the Russian oligarch, linked uh, to Maria Butina? Thank you for asking. I meant to mention. So, The Washington Post reported, uh, I believe, yesterday morning um, that uh, Maria Butina had a funder uh, who was a Russian oligarch uh, named Konstantin Nikolaev. Uh, so, Nikolaev um, was not named in the government and the prosecutor's uh, documents they filed last week, uh, in which, by the way, they uh, I want to mention before we finish here about about, about the sex, <laughs> but uh, Nikolaev, uh, according to the Washington Post, was identified by Maria Butina when she testified to the Senate Intelligence Committee um, as the funder uh, of of some of her activities, and and the, the charging documents point out that she said that she needed a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar budget to proceed. Uh, with the, her various uh, contacts with U.S. political officials and 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 uh, intelligence officials, were possible, uh, and and that's a big budget for a graduate student. Um, so, and, and in the meantime, she was uh, she formed a, a relationship with an uh, NRA, um, um, uh, sometimes NRA fundraiser and Republican operative named Paul Erickson. Uh, as I believe you mentioned him before. And according to the latest government filings, um, Maria Butina had a romantic relationship with Mr. Erickson, who we believe is a person identified in the uh, in, in the doc these documents as uh, person number one. Uh, according to the prosecutors, she ha was having this romantic relationship, but disdained, disdained having, having, doing this, and that she also offered sex in return for influence with another person during her time here that the FBI was able to track. So, um, Maria, B and, and Maria Butina, uh, in emails, talked about an offer to work for the Russian intelligence agency, the FSB. So. Uh, 
you know, we're, 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 we're going to be fascinated to see where this case goes. Will she be, will she actually go to trial? Will there be, uh, uh, will she, is it possible? Now, she is the only Russian so far to be in U.S. custody as part of this broad, in, these, these investigations, Mueller's investigation, the U.S. Attorney's Office in, uh, for the District of Columbia's investigation into Butina and the NRA. And the, or, or in possible movement of money into the NRA. I'm going to be careful about that. But the NRA has repeatedly said it has not been contacted by the FBI throughout, which is fascinating. But that doesn't mean the, NRA, the FBI hasn't uh, combed through its possible donors. Uh, so, so we'll have to see where this goes. But if, um, let's just say, if, if they find that money went to the NRA, that will open up a whole new avenue of questions about whether there was any coordination between the NRA's uh, pro-Trump spending during the campaign and the Trump campaign, which would not be permissible under current federal election laws. Let's turn to Maria Butina in her own words, speaking at Freedom Fest conference in 2015, the same year Donald Trump attended the Las Vegas event. I'm the founder and now I'm the board member of the Right to Balance. This is an all-Russian public organization. We uh, promote gun rights. I made this trip because I think that freedom is very important and the basic of any freedom is, of course, uh, gun rights, economy, and I would like to know more uh, and bring this knowledge to Russia and traveling from Moscow, from Russia, and I hope it will be useful in my country. So, um, Greg Gordon, if you can comment on what she's saying and how she was taken, how she was arrested and denied bail, was she leaving the country? That's what the FBI says. And, and let me just say, Maria Butina appears to have been ubiquitous. She was everywhere, it seems. Uh, she was sending uh, tweets about gun gun rights. I was reading one yesterday where she, she hooked up with a, an 80-something-year-old 80, 80 woman who was, uh, you know, concealed carry or, or was uh, you know, firing a powerful uh, uh, gun at a range. And, and she, um, uh, she went out to the ranges around the Washington area t uh, and scouted them out. Uh, there are photos of Maria Butina wearing— um, sort of racy outfits with and 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 pointing weapons and uh, she's she's uh, you know she met with uh, John Bolton uh, and of course she was at the <coughs> as many NRA events uh, as she could as she could make it and and um, I, you know the question is you know what, what was the plan here and did she know about money if there was money moving in illicitly uh, through perhaps an oligarch or a or or another channel, the Russians are very good at moving money and hiding it through offshore, you know, a whole chain of offshore accounts. Did that happen here? That's the question the FBI has been, I think, trying to determine, you know, get to the bottom of. But at the same time, uh, there's this separate issue of what kind of. Um, just influence they were seeking, trying to trying to broaden uh, the, the Russian sphere of influence in the Western world. Is that is that what this was all about, or was there more?